Last week, on July 27th, the St. Mary's Armenian Church in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles held a commemorative Requiem Mass attended by many Armenian residents of Los Angeles. Additionally, hundreds of Armenians of Los Angeles gathered at the Merriam Karamanukian Glendale Youth Center to hear speeches honoring the so-called Lisbon Five. It was organized by the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, the ARF. They were not alone. Armenians throughout the world honored the Lisbon Five on that day. In Russia, in Paris, in Massachusetts, in Michigan, in Sydney, Australia, and, of course, in Armenia. In the eyes of Armenian newspapers, the Lisbon Five are not only martyrs on the so-called altar of freedom, they are true heroes. If you are not an Armenian, however, the Lisbon Five are not martyrs and heroes, they are murderers. They are terrorists. In 1983, five young Armenian men, aged between 19 and 21, plotted an attack on the Turkish embassy in Lisbon, Portugal. All of the planning was done in Beirut, Lebanon. They boarded a plane in Beirut using Lebanese passports. In Lisbon, they drove in two rental cars to the Turkish embassy. They planned to attack it and to hold hostages until their demands were met. They demanded that Turkey acknowledge the death of Armenians in the Ottoman Empire in 1915 as genocide. Their attack failed when a Turkish security officer shot and killed one of the 19-year-old men. The remaining four attacked the next-door Turkish ambassador's residence. They took the wife and the 17-year-old son of the acting Turkish ambassador as hostages. Accidentally or on purpose, they detonated a bomb that killed the Turkish ambassador's wife, a Portuguese police officer, and themselves. The ambassador's son escaped. The Armenian terrorists were killed in their own explosion. A typed note to the Associated Press by the Armenian Revolutionary Army claimed responsibility for the deadly suicide attack. It said, quote, We have decided to blow up this building and to remain under its collapse. This is not suicide, nor an expression of insanity, but rather our sacrifice to the altar of freedom, unquote. Actually, what they did is a precise definition of insanity. That is, quote, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. Between January 1973 and 1992, Armenian assassins murdered 37 Turkish diplomats and family members in 22 different cities and countries around the world, stretching from Los Angeles to Sydney, Australia. Lisbon was just one instance. The Washington Post asked on July 31, 1983, four days after Lisbon, Quote, how many Turkish diplomats will be killed by fanatical murders from Armenian terrorist groups? The question has a raw answer. As many as the terrorists think they can put away without getting caught. Armenian terrorism, as we can see, is not new. It is also pervasive. It started right here in California in 1973 when Armenian and Armenian terrorists murdered the Turkish Consul General and his deputy in Santa Barbara. The Armenian terrorist was arrested, convicted, and later pardoned by California's only ethnic Armenian governor, George Dukmejian. Nine years later, in 1982, a second Turkish consul general was murdered in cold blood by Armenian terrorists in Los Angeles. One of the terrorists escaped. The other one, Hampig Sasunian, was arrested, convicted, and sentenced to life in prison. Just a few months ago, after almost 40 years in prison, Hampig Sassoonian's five different denials of parole from California prisons were overridden by the Los Angeles Superior Court. Governor Gavin Newsom of California decided not to appeal the Los Angeles court decision. So, the terrorist Hampig Sassoonian will soon be released. Though his crime was in 1982, this year's court decision to let him go made worldwide news all over, including a condemnation by the Biden administration. So Armenian terrorism is still with us here in California. 
in Armenia, deep-rooted radicalism that started in the 1930s with a close attachment to Germany's Nazism not only manifested itself in Armenian soldiers, 30,000 of them serving as a unit of the Nazi army, but its leader is still hailed as a national hero with statues, parks, village squares, etc. This so-called Armenian national hero, a Nazi collaborator and war criminal, is Garagin Nejde. The American Jewish magazine Forward published this year a list of 22 monuments in Armenia dedicated to this Nazi collaborator and war criminal, which makes Armenia a country with the largest concentration of Nazi monuments in the entire world. Nejde, who was also the founder of a racist Armenian master race theory and movement, enthusiastically supported Hitler and the Holocaust. He was arrested, convicted, and imprisoned by the Soviet Union for war crimes after World War II. In his Nazism, he is joined by another Armenian national hero, Drastamat Dro, D-R-O, Kanayan, who also wore a Nazi uniform and commanded massacres of non-Armenians. He has streets named after him in Armenian cities as well as statues. One of Armenia's highest military honors is named after this Nazi collaborator. Another example is closer to home. A native-born Californian of, Amer of Armenian parents, Monty Milkonian, first made a name for himself in Lebanon where he was hired by Palestinian Arab radicals to kill their opponents. He was paid cash to kill. In 1980, in Athens, Greece, he murdered a Turkish diplomat and his 14-year-old daughter. Later, in France, he was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison and was deported the minute he finished his sentence. He then went to his parents' homeland, Armenia, where he was given command of troops that invaded and ethnically cleansed Azerbaijan's Karabakh region in the early 1990s war. He personally participated in several mass atrocities, war crimes, against Azerbaijani civilians, the largest of which was at the town called Kojali in 1992. Monty Malkonian died in combat. Armenia declared him a national hero and named its military academy after him. Yes, an assassin for hire terrorist is a national hero in Armenia, as is Hampig Sassoonian, admitted murderer on the streets of Los Angeles, as are the Lisbon Five. In July 2020, a year ago, hundreds of radicalized Armenians chased and violently attacked a handful of Azerbaijani Americans in broad daylight in Los Angeles. A dozen Azerbaijani Americans were injured and hospitalized. The Los Angeles Police Department opened a hate crime investigation and is still looking for the violent Armenian radicals. With that vicious hate crime, the Armenian violent radicalism the world has experienced since the 1970s has returned to the United States. Let me stress, it is not welcome today, nor was it ever welcome when Armenian terrorists killed on the streets of Los Angeles, as well as planting and exploding many bombs injuring many people throughout Los Angeles and neighboring Orange County. Those terrorist murderers and bombers were apprehended. It took years, but they were apprehended and jailed. In Sassoonian's case, he was in prison for almost 40 years. Those terrorists, including Sassoonian, were members of a terrorist organization called the JCAG. This organization was part of our, the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, the ARF, otherwise called the Dashnak Party. The same radical Armenian Dashnak Party that sympathized in the 1930s with Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany and supported the Holocaust in the 1940s. The same Armenian party continues its existence in the U.S. today, despite its pro-Nazi past and support for domestic and international terrorism. The lobbyist arm of Dashnaks is the Armenian National Committee of America, ANCA, ANCA. ANCA was even chaired by Murad Topelian, a suspected leader of the terrorist JCAG and a participant of the 1980 bombing of the Turkish mission in New York City. 
He was arrested and accused by the FBI of plotting terrorist attacks against Turkish targets in the U.S. for two decades. So this terrorist chaired ANCA and was awarded ANCA's Freedom Award after his FBI conviction. The same ANCA that manipulates Congress members in Washington today to give millions of dollars, ta American taxpayer dollars, to Armenia. The Armenia that calls terrorists and murderers and Nazi collaborators national heroes. The same ANCA that sponsored the violent riot in Los Angeles last July that police are still investigating as a giant hate crime. Yet many elected officials in the U.S. in general, and in California in particular, turn a blind eye to the true nature of radical ANCA and the Dashnaks, and continue to cater and pander to ANCA, accepting their campaign checks and parroting their narratives. They should wake up and disassociate themselves from the radical and racist ANCA as soon as possible, ASAP, and the dash next. This is Raul Lowry Contreras. Subscribe to this channel and you will be updated whenever there is a new episode of the Contreras Report posted. You can also send me an email with questions and comments and I will promise to respond. The email address will appear on the screen in a few seconds. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.